Thanks for watching The Paul Farrington Show. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all of the above, and make sure you follow us at Paul Farrington Show on Instagram. Thanks for watching. And welcome into the Paul Farrington Show, the NFL Week 4 Reaction Show. We're finally back. Paul Farrington, Andrew Keenan, Jack Weinberger, Zach Bloomquist behind, uh, behind the desk there. A uh, healthy Zach, well, actually, maybe not a healthy Zach Bloomquist. Yeah, we could yeah. get to that later. A healthier. Yeah. And there he is, Robert Ziggy Ziegler from University of Virginia. The yeah, beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. the beautiful University of Virginia. We're coming to you guys straight off a pretty tough trivia loss on Tuesday night. We uh we frequent the Allendale Bar and Grill, which you know, this is a little sponsorship right here, waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We frequent the Allendale Bar and Grill every Tuesday night for trivia, and we've had some great moments there, some great great moments of victory. And uh, you know, today we we went all in on the last question, had no idea what we were doing, and uh, the winner, no one got it right. The winner was the only team that bet one point. So the moral of the story is, and we know this, we know this. I, I completely, I disagree you know, with this look, moral. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you know, no, no. It, let me just say. No, is, no. You you play to win the no, game. No, no. When you don't know you don't, the answer at the end. No, no. You, no when you no, don't no, know the on, answer, you put one on. It's a worse. I'll explain to you what's going on here. It's a worse feeling. It's a worse feeling. If you only wager one point and you get the answer right yes. and lose, but you would have won. So, Ziggy, we're in a situation. We're in first place out of how many? 20 teams, maybe? 15. 15. 15 we're in first yeah, place 15. going into the final question. You can flawless. wager. Flawless. Near flawless. You night. wager between 1 and 30, correct? Wait, wait. Do you wager before or after you know the question? After you know the question. After. After. So, we had some people that were, you know, a little confident, but whatever. So, me, I was pretty vocal about. You don't wager one here. You wager 30. You play to win the game. You no, don't you, play not to lose. And I agree. What was the question? The question was, I can't it even, was like, I can't it, even, I, it was like, there it was, was some, some war that was fought after the civil war of involving, I think native American. I don't even know who it was. And it was, there was a TV show based on that war. It was some seventies TV show. And miss, Mr. Weinberger thought he knew the answer, but he clearly was not confident so, at the end. So he's, my dad said the answer was Beverly Hillbillies. And then my grandpa said what, the real, Ma- the real McCoys. McCoys, yeah. And we ended up going Beverly Hillbillies. Nobody got the answer right. So whoever wagered the least amount of points ended up winning. So that's why it's a whole debacle, like if we should have wagered Listen, one, this blah, is blah, what blah. I'll tell you. This is what I'm afraid of. One of my future JV players for basketball this year, they walk in there, say, what's up, Coach Keenan? You're wagering one on the last question. I want us to be, we're up eight points in a rivalry game. Four minutes left in the fourth quarter. We're not running the, the the four corners. We're still running our offense. We're trying to score. You play to win. You don't sit. You know how many times I've watched teams You sit. lost. If you had bet so one, you would have won the game. Ask, well, well if, we, if we lose the game by being no, aggressive, but, that's but, we lost. But it's I'm a, fine with that. It's a worse feeling to get it and only wager one. No, lose. no. But wait, when wait, you don't wait, know. On. You, you guys ahead. didn't know the answer to this question? No, but we had no, a, we didn't. We did not know the answer. It was F troop, right? No, no it's family, family it was family feud. It was not F Troop? No, it's shoot. That's it's what family I would have guessed. Okay, so you, you don't wager when you don't know the answer. Here's what I'm saying, Jack. Hold on, let me say no. I disagree yeah. with this. Me no, and Jack no, are on the same page. Yeah, Andrew, nah. when, when you're – look, your whole point is winning. If we bet one point, we win the game. No, but you know – yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yes, so I'm saying – You didn't know that. We've won, five teams could have got it right. We've won before by betting one point when we didn't know the answer because everyone else overestimates. When you don't know the answer, you don't I mean, bet. Do, the expected values and no, 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 no. Your, your kids no, no, are walking no, no. into the gym and they're saying, Coach Keenan, we saw you lose a trivia. If you bet one point, they're like, Coach. No, no, they, they say, Coach, Coach no, Keenan, we they, saw you no. have faith in our guys. Yeah, they, they respect, Coach, they respect us betting 30, thank trusting you. our no, team. They're walking yes. in saying, Coach Keenan's an idiot. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. Paul, they, you, Keenan, you, were in, you were in that dugout for that state championship run. We trusted our guys. It wasn't. Paul, we didn't trust the answer to him. No, listen, it's 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 four zero in the first inning. We're answer. still running. We're still going. We're not playing small. We're still. We try to pack, tack it on, pack it in. You, we're not sitting back like, all right, we're up four zero, and then the other teams get a momentum. No, we want to. We want to ram it down your throat. Listen to me. I no, try and, to listen. And, listen and, and Keenan, Keenan, you 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 would have been the, you would have been John Harbaugh going for it on fourth against the Bills and just single handedly lose your team the game. Look, sometimes you win, you sometimes you lose. Listen sometimes me. you win, sometimes you lose. With my this. my father. Nathaniel Weinberger gave out Beverly Hillbillies. I went with it. Oh, I, I trust we, our we had faith. I'd follow him we, to the gates we, of hell. We, we, you saying you're we, not, though. You wanted one. We trusted our teammate. We your 30 points. Went for the win. 
came up short. I'm ma- imagine I thought Fine. I knew it. Andrew knows it. I got it. I feel I'm confident in this answer. And you said, you know what, Andrew? One point. I'm not coming back next week. No, no, no. I don't want to play for that team. You agree. I, I was, of Thank course you. I agree. No, no. Of course I, I agree. trust Mr. Weinberger when he got up and he was he was with it. And then as he's walking back, That's he's because going, we were talking about him. You guys were saying one, one. one. You're holding up to because one. Because you, he was. All right. Me and Matt were holding up to 30. Oh, I was going 30 all the way. And I'm the writer, too. I was going 30 all the way. Ziggy, what was your trivia right. question we're, we're real back. quick before we move on? We're back next week. So I I, I don't participate in trivia very much, but I was at, I was at a, a local bar with a few gr- other graduate students. We were listening in on this trivia. Any honeys? Play. What? <laughs> Ziggy, you cut, you cut any, you cut any this, numbers? This was after a reading group. We just finished talking about the principle of the identity of indiscernible. Re- reading has no gender. There could have been some sweet, sweet ladies. You didn't answer the question. All right, let him get to this thing. <laughs> So we're sitting there, and the reason we don't do trivia, honestly, I think, is because it would just be too easy. Um, here was like the <laughs> big final true. question of this trivia group, and y'all, y'all, y'all can see, I can see whether this is too easy or not. The question was, like, this is the final year, like thirty point question equivalent. How many bones does a shark have? One fifty. No, okay. So let's let's. Think. <laughs> can I go through my thought process? Yeah, let's see. It could, the answer here is so obvious. So I want to go with the, like the skull and jaw. That's one bone. So that's one. Dude, I, I maybe well, I'm gonna go. With that's one. Then we have a we have a tail fin. The the fin, that's one. So that's two. Oh, it's probably like four. And then I think you said on. And then there's there's like a fillet in the middle, like with the ribs, but they don't have ribs, so that'd be three. And then the two arms. I'll go with five. I'm gonna go with one fifty. That five sounds pretty good. Is this a joke? <laughs> oh wait, wait. Is it do, zero? Do, do, do teeth count? The answer is zero. Do teeth, do teeth you, don't you, count? Don't, you don't ask a question like that unless the answer is zero. Look, guys, I'm telling and you. Of course, Ziggy the answer is, was obviously zero. Wait, how many bones? Wait, Ziggy, what yeah. did you get? Ziggy, so what, what, what is the skull? Zero bones. What did you get? Ziggy, what did you guess? What did you guess? We didn't guess anything because we didn't weren't play. playing. Oh, I, oh, I told okay. my teammates at the table, like, it's zero. Everyone knows it's zero. Ziggy, is, uh, do teeth not count? They're made teeth of cartilage, not bone. So why didn't you Why didn't you play that? What about a skull, though? It would have been too easy. And also undergrads were playing, and you don't you don't want to get you don't want to play trivial <laughs> Guys, undergrads. I'm serious when I tell you this. When I tell you this, Ziggy's like one of these. He's one of the smartest people I know. Like this guy, he's Vince. Him and Vince, you walk into a trivia room, and you're, you're that guy Vince bail, bailing us tonight. Yeah, yeah. That, we don't that's like someone that. who would have waited. Yeah, his mom's birthday. We don't like that. His mom's birthday. Celebrate tomorrow. You, right. you, how many birthdays have his mom had? Let's, how many uh, trivia championships have we won? <laughs> we need it. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna start paying him to come. Let's explain the elephant in the room here. If you've watched this show before. You're well aware that Jack Weinberger, to my left, is a very big Pittsburgh Steelers fan since birth. He's been to many games. He's been to – have you been to a Super Bowl or or just AFC championships? No, but I've seen him win two AFC chips in Heinz Field. Yep, like all the – any big game in – I mean, I guess now Hackershire Stadium. But in the past, Heinz Field. Heinz Field. Jack was there. So you agree it is Heinz Field now? Yep. Okay, I'm fine with that. This is a man who has spent thousands of dollars over his life, or his father has spent thousands of dollars over his life, to be at Steelers games, support this team. That same father you don't trust. Yeah, same. I, I mean, I trusted him. Oh, I put, oh, I, him. I, oh him. Yeah, yeah. I, I put down 30 I don't points. I don't want to get into it. I said to Mr. Weinberger tonight, if you're confident, I'll go with you. Okay. My strategy has okay. now changed if we're not confident. All right. <laughs> Jack, you, on the other hand, is sitting here. Because you're a plays not to lose. <laughs> who, would, who would have won? Jack is sitting here tonight. Notre Dame fan. In a Zach Wilson jersey. <laughs> you may be questioning why. Zach, can you play back exactly... What was said on air last week when Jack and Andrew were discussing the Steelers-Jets game? Jack, will you publicly make a video apologizing to Zach Wilson and the good people of your home state when I, when, when he if, wins? If the Jets beat the Steelers, and this you, 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 I'm saying numbers, this right now, I'm saying this right now. If the Jets win that game, I will make a video publicly apologizing to my home state and Zach Wilson. I think the Jets get blown out. Thank you. There you go. So um, look into the camera. Look into so it. So here's the public apology well, to Zach Wilson in the state of New Jersey following the Jets victory <laughs> in Pittsburgh this past Sunday. Which, which look, we're all we're all surprised except for Andrew. Oh, I'm so, not surprised. I had Jets money. I, I, no, no, no everyone's surprised except you. So uh, Jack, why don't you go ahead, look into our, our camera right here, and, and give your your public apology. You guys saw it. Look, I, I I made this deal because I thought there was no chance we were going to lose. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I really, I really did it. Uh, and yeah, this is a man who has been to every Steelers home playoff game in the last 15 or so years. I haven't missed one. This hurts me to do because I believe black and gold. Well, but, this isn't an anti-black I, and gold. This no, is a pro it's, it's, green it's, and white. It's a, I'm, a man, I'm a man of my word. And 
Look, man, I, Zach Wilson, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon now. Like, what he showed me, that, <laughs> what he showed me in that fourth quarter Thank against you. my defense, like, I, I was surprised, and and I give more credit to him than I initially did. Uh, I think he's better than what I gave him credit for. And Zachary uh, Capono or Capano, Capono, Capono Wilson, you bad man. Yep. I I apologize. I apologize to you. I apologize to Andrew. Thank you. I apologize to the New York Jets. And I apologize to my home state, the state the Jets actually play in, New Jersey, for the disrespect that I gave them this past hey. week. Jack, well and done. Look, as, as a man of my word, J E T S Jets, Jets, Jets! Hey! You deserve that. Listen, I've been through a lot. Two and two feels good. Feels real good. But we're not done. And I just want to make a mention. There's a man in this room who has correctly predicted the Jets' first four games. Hey, don't give away the fifth. And, oh, we're going to get oh, the I, I had And I, I didn't predict week, week 18, 17th game, because I said, I'll be there fighting with those Jets. So I'm four out of 16. I'm 25% of the way there. This is impressive, but it's not over. So far, so good. So far, so good. But I see, but I see someone doubting. Some one point wager are doubting on this board behind me. Well, we'll get who there. loves the Dolphins we'll, and we'll, we'll get, get there. there. We let will me, get there. Let me say one thing: the audacity that this man has to walk into my house Sunday at one and watch us lose on my couch. On my couch, this guy walks in and watches the Jets beat the Seals. Listen, you you may think we don't hang out outside of the studio, but uh, all, to, uh, all the time. <laughs> the disgusting <laughs> amount of time between all of us is spent together. So anyway, that's why I'm in this Zach Wilson jersey. He walked into Heinz Field. Heinz Field and beat my Pittsburgh Steelers when I did not think there was a way that he would. Even even when we're not all together, we're, the, the group chat is constantly going off. It's it's a it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. But uh, I feel like that's for listeners. If you're still around, that's like watching the beginning of Hugo, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. It's just twelve minutes of nonsense, and then it says Hugo. You're like, that was the introduction. What am it. I in for? I've never seen it. it it's, don't watch it. But <laughs> so after that long intro, let's finally talk a little football. Why don't we start with the Steelers and the Jets? And there's one story here. There's one story. The Jets win. That's great. But the story is Kenny Pickett coming in in the second half, replacing Mitch Trubisky. Uh, he had his ups and downs. I know that some people at this table uh, may feel differently about that. He was good. But overall, I want to go back to, I think, our first show or our second show as Andrew cracks a second beer, an unnamed beer. Are you sure it's the second? There, there seems to be another <laughs> two <laughs> bottles. Down Third there. or fourth. <laughs> Third or fourth. Listen, man, the boys are Trivia rolling. Night. The Jets are two and two. The Mets have died. Uh, I might, sometimes you drink for happy and for sad. I might ask for uh, for one more as well. Listen, so here's I where I want to go. For a reason. This, this they is can't empty. All be for it's, 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 it's empty. I want to go back to. I think it was our first or second show when we talked about Kenny Pickett and the uh, the Mitch Trubisky d- dilemma in Pittsburgh. And I said the right decision was to start with Kenny Pickett, let him make his mistakes, let him get all those growing pains over with, so that next season. You're ready to go into that and compete. Well, I disagree. And that's you not disagree. How the Steelers disagree. Operate. No, that's not how they operate. But that's what I felt was the best decision for the franchise because Mitch Trubisky is just he's he's not an NFL starting quarterback. He's really not. Like he you want him as a backup, I think he can come in and be serviceable if you need him. But overall, he's just not gonna give you what you need. So why don't you let Kenny Pickett feel it out? And I think that you really did see him feel it out in this game. He's gonna make mistakes and he I, did. I, I thought he was good. But you thought yeah. he was okay? Yes. And let me talk for a bit here. So I disagree with you. I, I, thought, I thought it was fine to start the veteran, start the guy, with, the guy with NFL experience, see if he can guide the ship. He couldn't. And I feel bad for him because, right. Look, I don't I, feel look, bad for him. Look, he, he's, Millionaire. He's, he's not, you're right, but he's not phenomenal. <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world being about a quarterback. You're right. But he's not phenomenal. He's probably more of a backup, and I saw it. He was not put into a fantastic situation with the way the Steelers run their offense. No, and, and we we saw it for years with Big Ben when we had Todd Haley calling plays too, and it was noticeable. Big Ben noticeably on the sideline. Todd Haley, screw off! I'm calling my own plays. Mitch didn't have the power to do that. Nonetheless, not fantastic. Didn't have pick, the ability pick either. It, pick look, Pickett's the better. Ben also had AB. <laughs> <laughs> Pickett, Pickett is the better. AB's a whole other story. Pick, yeah, we'll pick, get into that later. Yeah. Pickett's the better quarterback, and I saw it in one half. It's Kenny Pickett's time. This football team's going nowhere, and he's the future of the team. So get him his reps now. Get him in now. Look, he was 10 for 13. He got the ball up the field decently. He has some beautiful throws to Pickens, a beautiful throw to Pat when he was 
he he was drilled. Potential's there. You can yeah, see, you can see glimpses. His, his interception shoe. Like, you'll look and say, oh, he had three picks. One was a hail mary at the end of the game. One was I a disregard. That. One was a ball to Claypool. I thought was a good ball where Claypool at six foot five, uh, his frame. And Zach, you agreed, has to come down. Well, with he it. stinks. I do think that he stinks. I think that interception that could be more of a decision throw because he's thrown yeah, into yeah. double coverage. And I think on the replay, he had someone out. But in the flat. but but the okay, but the. The way he put it up there for Chase Claypool, Claypool could have yeah, been down with that ball. Yeah, you guys a He made no effort at Listen, all. At all. Pickett's he, better than Trubisky. I he, completely he agree. He had some nice throws. He scrambled. Like he, he, looked, he looked fine to me. Yes. In his first half in the NFL. The issue is the Steelers didn't do him any, any like, they should have said, the Steelers should have said after, where they had a 10-day break after playing, who they played, after playing the Browns, Kenny Pickett is going to start next game. Give him 10 days with the starters. Give him 10 days with the ones. And let him get in the flow. I get it. Tomlin thought, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm sure he thought, as did you, who put, you know, your good name on the line. Trubisky will be able to get us by those, you know, same old Jets. And he wasn't cutting it. So they had to go to, they had to go to pick it. The stadium got into it. And I admit I was worried. But then, you know, the rust kind of showed he hasn't played in a game like this in a couple, in like almost, how long is it now? Maybe eight months he hasn't played in a real football game. He's a rookie. And he's yeah. just a rookie. This is his first NFL game. He's got a lot of weight on his shoulders. I was no listening. prep time whatsoever. No prep time. Yeah, on the broadcast, they said he is yet to throw a pass with the ones in practice. So listen, he, did, he, did he play, as someone who's seen rookie quarterbacks, I've seen the revolving door. Did he play well? I mean, to an NFL quarterback, no, he didn't play well. But he played to the point where you could be like, oh, that throw when Quinn and Williams is down his throat, he stands in and hits Fryer with right over the middle. That's a great throw. Oh, we're on the two-yard line. Instead of Mitch, you know, rolling back and throwing it out of bounds, we have Kenny who can make, like, a move and make a, a linebacker miss him. These are all promising things. I think he looked okay. I feel bad for the kid. He's got to go into uh, Buffalo, which, again, no, I know is the gonna biggest, that's, that's, hardest that's, place to play that's in football. That's a tough place to start your first game in the NFL. So, yeah. listen, I was happy. And, look, I wasn't mad. Like, when Kenny Pickett came in, while I was worried because the fans got into it, I wasn't worried, like, Oh, if we take a, le- a lead here, this guy's going to go down the field. And not everyone's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Not everyone yeah, yeah, comes yeah. in. The, and most like, people aren't. The thing, like, he was, he had those three picks, which I only think one was his fault. The one, one was terrible. One was terrible. That blew the game. Yeah. A, yeah, a decision you can't make. And again, rookie, first half he's playing in the NFL, it ha- it's going to happen fine. But I thought that I saw a lot of promising throws from Kenny. Throws that I don't think Mitch would make. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, he's, like, yeah. that's the, and that's the difference like, is that you can tell that Mitch can't make some of those throws and that Pickett, uh, he, he can and that he will when he you starts to make You can also tell the them. offense, like Pickens, too, watching the game. Oh, Pickens, he's, he's a problem. He's good. No, he's, he's, he's good, mentally, but he's a he's mental, at, he's but a like mental You can tell when he comes in, and I saw some of the, uh, just being on Jets Twitter, I see some of the opposing teams post game. You could tell that the offense wants to play for Pickett. Like, when he came in, there was a definite boost where, like, the guys were like, Going at it, Pickett was um, he was more into the game. With Mitch, I feel like they know, like, oh, he's going to drop back and just check it down five yards to somebody. It, it was a spark. Yeah, I want to um, I want I want to go to spark. Ziggy and I want to hear Ziggy's thoughts on this. Ziggy, what do you think of the the Pickett Trubisky decision to uh, start Kenny in the second half? Two things. One, can you believe that Chase Claypool is two inches taller and forty pounds bigger than George Pickens? He sure does not play like it. Uh, <laughs> That's I love insane. Chase Claypool. He did yeah. he did a lot for us, but. Man, you, you can just tell what happens when a new wide receiver comes into that offense. You can but, you tell what happens when, when you start going on TikTok and painting your face like a warrior. That's what I'm saying. Like, make Worry some about a, football. Make some attempt at that ball. He made, he made none. I, I thought it was just a bad ball. He didn't even have to jump. Well, he didn't even have to jump up like that, right? That was just – it was just bad play all around from Claypool. But, yep. you know, maybe you think he shouldn't have thrown that up. I get it. So what In do you think, case, though? You, you have to call yes about the quarterbacks. Yeah. It's, I mean, the future was not with Mitch Trubisky. I don't know. I, I think when we're looking back on this draft in a few years, we're going to see that what happened was Pickett got grouped in with a really bad class of quarterbacks, and that led to him slipping. You know, teams didn't need quarterbacks quite like they did. Lots of teams found bridge guys, but I fully expect him to be good in the NFL. I think the kinds of concerns people had are worrying. And if, you, if that was your hope, right, if you're a Steelers fan, you're looking for him to play well, lots to feel positive about with this game that's for sure i mean he i was, don't know it's like that pick he makes at the end of the game i think that was brutal quarterback will tell you that that's the thing you can only learn by actually yeah playing. that was bad because like, in college he gets away with that 10 times out of 10 
He was he 10 just, of 13. Like, outside of his picks, yeah. no, he every, never won Every pass week. was caught by someone. Yeah. And, <laughs> look, he, we were, Pittsburgh was up 20 to 10. And credit Andrews' man, Zach Wilson, well, that's and, what and, I was and, about and the Jets' offense. Like, Kenny Pickett put us in a position to win the game. And then made a horrible turnover. And then he put you but, in a position. To but, lose. but we yeah. had the lead, and then Zach Wilson. But I think, uh, and the one more thing on this game. Yeah, then we'll I move know, on. Then we'll get out. Of it. But I think you said there's one storyline, and that's Kenny Pickett. I think more of a storyline here is Zach Wilson. I come out of this game, I don't go, oh, Kenny Pickett, you know, he's the few, any of this. Like, I think he just played like a rookie quarterback. He made some good plays. He made some bad plays. But the story to me was, and what I've been kind of seeing on, you know, the Jets side of things is this, we might finally have our guy. I've seen this game 15, uh, 20 other times, and the Jets never win this game. We good. never win this he was game. Good in the fourth quarter. And again, this is like, and I, I'm not comparing him to Brady. I'm not comparing him to Mahomes. I'm not comparing him to Rodgers. But this is the thing good quarterbacks do. He yeah, might have struggled a little bit. He hasn't played for a couple, like, he hasn't, he, this is his, I believe, his 13th career game, which is not a lot. He's a young guy. He hasn't played a real NFL game, and I believe it was like seven months. And he came in. He had to get the job done in the fourth quarter, and he did. He went 10 for 12. He threw for 132 yards, somewhere around there. He threw for a touchdown. I mean. No, it was really, it was really impressive. But I'm, I'm going to wait for, for next week. Again, to, and you got to compound it. Yeah. That, that's the thing with the young guys. they got to be consistent. Great, great, great players. players. I will, I will say, if you're looking for things to feel good about with Wilson, one thing that's for sure is compared to Flacco, he got a lot more out of the receivers, right? All three of Wilson, Moore, and Davis at different points in the game were able to contribute, and that's just not something you were seeing with Flacco. Yeah, no, no, that's there's definitely a, an underlying storyline there with with the, I would say, solid play of, of uh, Zach Wilson, but for this game right now, it's... Kenny Pickett's the starting quarterback in Pittsburgh moving forward. Right. And hopefully Zach Wilson uh, can stay healthy the rest of the season because he's he's an exciting player to watch. He's exciting. Now, um, clearly you think he's an exciting player to watch. Ziggy, I don't know if you've heard Andrew's power rankings post <laughs> week four. I just want – I would real quick – I'm not sure I want to hear his power rankings. For yeah, l- l- let, me, let me run through these real quick. And um, I, I, just, I want to see Ziggy's initial reaction to this. You got um, – and we'll go quick. Buffalo at one, Kansas City two, Philadelphia, Baltimore – Green Bay, that's your top five. Seems pretty good to me. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, natural. Maybe Green Bay's a little overrated. But. No. Uh, six, San Francisco, Tampa Bay, the Rams, the Bengals, the Chargers. That's your six through ten. Again. Uh, no. Who Again, don't you like? So, there's solid teams in there. The Rams. The Rams, you can't. Uh, there, but there's still solid teams, so you can make arguments. Now, here we go. Eleven. The Jaguars? Uh, hold on. Hold on. We'll get there. Eleven. <laughs> New York Jets. <laughs> 12, Minnesota Vikings, 13, Dallas, 14, Giants, 15, Miami. All right, there's your, 10, there's well, your 11 through 15. I, this is oh, what I we're think. almost done. We're oh, almost done. I, okay, I'll tell you my thought process. 16 through 20, Atlanta, Cleveland, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Las Vegas. Andrew, Andrew Oakland, but uh, he, 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 likes, I, he likes to remember the past. Yeah, they're Oakland. I mean, they're 21 Oakland through Denver. 25, Denver, New Orleans, New England, Arizona, Jacksonville at 25. And then to round it out, 26 onward, Seattle, Detroit, Pittsburgh, Houston, Washington, Chicago, Carolina. My, my big problem is Jacksonville. And so, I know that, I know that on, that's what on. you were li- waiting for, Ziggy. I have to imagine you're in agreement here. I mean, the Jaguars, I think, without a doubt, have been one of the most impressive teams in the NFL. I don't mean comparative expectations. I mean total. When they went into when it, the first quarter of that Eagles game, when they were up 14-0, I was watching the television thinking to myself, wow, like, this team – they're ready to take the jump. Well, I, I think they're the 25th best team. In the NFL. <laughs> and I, it's clearly well, when I'm just, making this, I think, who is beating who? That's what I go through in my mind. I don't know how you're supposed to make power, power rankings. To me, I think, who can beat who? That's why I think you're delusional. So I, I think, think the same way. Well, the so Jaguars I, can beat the Chargers. You get the Chargers pretty high. They can beat the Colts. They can shut out the Colts. I, I understand that, but I'm thinking like... They can beat the Eagles. If there's one game... They can't beat the Eagles. If they play one game... Who do I think is going to win that game? And that's why I put the Jets 11. I, I think if the Jets go against the Vikings tomorrow, I'm I'm pretty confident sure. in my Jets. The, the Jets no. the Jets have a nice no. comeback win in the final second oh, well, against, here comes. against one of the one of against worst, his against, 28th against, ranked team. against one of your worst teams in the NFL. And they're number 11. Well, listen, I got the Dolphins at 15. This is a big test. 
I mean, I mean, you have look, them. You have them I, as the, the sixth best team in the AFC right now. I'm excited for this game. Yeah, I, I, I again, like I said before the season, we will be competing for that that last wild card spot. Right. Question: right. Who, who have the Jets beaten this year? We've beaten the Browns, and we've beaten this, and we've beaten the uh, the Steelers. Who have the Dolphins beaten this year? They've beat it. Well, they've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Baltimore Ravens, and they have beat the who is the last team in the uh, uh, Patriots. The, yeah, Patriots. So the Dolphins beat two of the best teams in the NFL and the Jets beat two of the worst teams in the NFL. So you think the Jets well, the are Dolphins, better the Dolphins, than the Dolphins because they're beating, they can, they can beat better Ziggy, teams. Let me take you down a little memory lane here. If, if you know my memory, I have a, I have a big memory. I stand, I tend to take long showers and think. So long walks too, clearly. As no I do take long. I'm a big thinker. I'm Look, a, I'm, I saw you walking the other day, by the way, I, I, I drove by him. Probably didn't wait. He probably didn't wait. I didn't even know. Well, I, yeah, I'm locked in. You know what it was? You were walking, and I was driving the same All right, make direction. this Jets thing quick, because it's not a Jets podcast. This isn't a Jets thing. Oh, well, then please. It's a, uh, it's a Dolphins thing, actually. Oh, all right. So, as a senior in high school, a nice little 17-year-old, I was, I was young for my grade, so I was only 18 for about a month. I was in this class. It was called sports medicine, which, you know, I, I, I actually went on to college, you know, health and exercise science major along with teaching. So, maybe, maybe this sparked it. In this class, we watched a lot of movies. It was a good class. It was about sports. You'd watch movies. Nice class to take. It's an easy yes, class for us. Yes, yes. Who was your teacher? Uh, Mr. DeStasso. I, 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 I had him, too. I had him, too. Regardless, the teacher <laughs> didn't matter. It was just the class. You know what I was asking, man. Keep going. Keep going. I, I don't know why, but... <laughs> I, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> I think everyone knows at this point. It's no, now, now I know. Mr. DeStasso is a man. Um, regardless, there's a movie that came out when I was a senior... And it was called Concussion mm-hmm. with Will Smith, who, you know, just came to the limelight again with uh, hitting people in the face. Maybe he has a concussion. There's a doctor. Doctor, I think it was Amalu. Was that it? I can't, I can't remember. Right something now. along those names of African descent. Amalu, Umala, something like that. Okay. I saw him today on Twitter. And he said, this is the Mike Webster. This is the CTE guy. They made a movie about him. He's so knowledgeable. He said he doesn't think Tua should ever play football again. Really? I didn't see that. That is what he said today. So me ranking the Dolphins at 15 is generous. Well, no, They I, just lost their quarterback for, for – this guy is – we're lucky he's not a vegetable. Well, I no, mean, I, mean, I mean watching that game, we know. We were all watching you, that here. Did, did, yeah, he's, 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 he's scared. scared. He's, he's ranking, I was petrified. He's ranking the Dolphins not their quarterback. Yes. So it's not a terrible ranking. Thank you. Like, if well, it was, what, what's terrible is Dolphins are not without their quarterback. Yes, you, they they, are. You, you see him with the Dolphins now. You think they're listening to Bennett Omalu and telling Tua that he can't play anymore? That's actually Twitter scary. That's part of the so. scary thing is that if I'm Tua's parents, I go, listen, man, you no, got the bag. Play. You're a first round pick. You're done. He's playing again this year. You, you know he's going to play that again Tua's this year. You know that Tua's an adult? Okay, but he's not, like, he's not playing anytime soon. He's not playing against the Jets. He's going to play within three weeks. I think, yeah, within, I was going to say within six, he's playing. Okay, and then one more hit to the head, he's dead. No, that's, that's the scary thing about the NFL. That's why I actually find it hard sometimes to watch football. I mean, I wouldn't play. Okay. No, I mean after are you yeah, like after you saw his fingers like yeah, that. If, if, if I'm getting carted off, if if we play Thanksgiving this year and I sprain my ankle, I may never never get I may never get off the couch again. Like I'm <laughs> no, done with this. No, it's saying if my arm is sore, I'm done. Yeah, this, this dude is a 400 pound man. Threw him like a rag doll, and he his fingers. He looked like he was in the uh, the, the way he's he gonna, saw he's the way his play head again. the way his head hit the ground. I'm like that, that's it. If that was me. I, I'm finished. No, but that's what's scary. He's gonna play again and. I, look, he, he'll probably be okay to play until he until he takes that that third but, big hit like, to the head. A, I mean, how many concussions has Brandon Cooks had at this point? These guys don't care. Well, again, something Crazy. we mentioned earlier with um, Antonio Brown. Look what happens to you later in life. I think some NFL players he, honestly should look at that and I be mean, like, "Look, at, didn't, didn't um, Demarius Thomas wasn't? He, I know he had a seizure, but wasn't that related to CT? Had, to had, CT? Had, no, I mean he had got this, in a car accident and." hit his head really hard during well, what's that. his face? But there's was, no was, evidence it was tied to the NFL. It was related to CTE, what's though, right, face? in some um, regards? Not, no, bro, no uh, Junior Seau. Junior Seau. Oh, CTE. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it's a uh, it's Like, it's Antonio Brown thing. can't function. Like, no. he, uh, there's something, if no. you saw, I saw some interviews yeah. of him, like, because after this whole thing came out of him in Dubai, I saw interviews of him, like, when he was younger with Ben, and he sounds like a well-spoken, like, educated, great teammate, and now he's in Dubai, like, being just running around close, like I don't know what he's doing. Just naked. Yeah, and I mean that's Antonio Brown's s- teammates have come out after this and said he's always been like this. He just used to put on a better face. 
Okay, but still, putting on the better, there's something wrong with his brain. The guy, ever since Vontez perfect, he's been different. I want, I want, that's just yeah, not true. That, that, I mean, no, I was going to say, that's like the poster of Antonio Brown's, you know, head trauma injuries, but we, we don't know. Um, Which is, it's sad. It I, really is. I do think that Teddy Bridgewater can carry the Dolphins while, and it's, I believe you have a tough schedule, Zach. But it's a fine wrong, ranking but, because, like, the Dolphins beat the Ravens and the Bills with their yeah, starting Yeah, I'm fine with that. Promise with the their, Jets. Their Promise the Jets at the left. No, and I said, oh, I yeah, said yeah. before the season, I will give to with props when he plays well. I, wa- I have bet the Bengals. Obviously, I never want anyone to get injured, but I was extremely worried about my bet when Tua was in. He looked good. And Zach even said in our group, he was like, oh, he's Tua Dyson. looks good. Yeah. They were running some, like, Mike Mc... I don't know. It was, like, some college-looking, like, or I was... They looked good. I think I think he'll be good when he gets back. You know, hopefully, he can stay but healthy. But they're not the same team with Teddy Bridgewater. He just no, needs, they're not. He they're just not. needs to find a way to get the ball and, and waddle it. Teddy Bridgewater, hands. no pun oh, intended. Yeah. He's just going to try and keep the Dolphins. Blue. But again, when you draft a quarterback at, what, he got drafted sixth? Sixth. Fifth or sixth. Yeah. I think it was... But that's, like, one of his concerns coming out of college with the hip injury. Like, he's a smaller guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. he got killed. I, um... I want to move things over, guys, to the NFC East here because the Cowboys and the Eagles are both playing extremely good football at the moment. Uh, both of them a little bit unexpected, especially given the circumstances. Why don't we start with Dallas? Uh, I went back and watched some Cooper Rush film because you I'll know say we, it we once, do that. And I'll say it again. Oh no, Coop. Yeah, Jack He's is my, fully. He is my quarterback in Dallas. He's yeah. my quarterback in well, Dallas. He's, he's not Jerry Jones. <laughs> no, he's not Jerry, Jerry Jones. Jones. Was very clear about that today. And here's it, what I want to say before, that's before why you get into Jerry it, Jack, Jones you hasn't won it. shit. Before you get into it, <laughs> when you <laughs> when you look at Cooper Rush won. and the way he's been playing recently, it's all like he is playing quarterback at a high level. Who are they making the week? reads? Someone good. They're playing. Yeah, uh, I've just, I've just looked at the Rams. They're the Rams. They're, they're, they're the Rams. I'm not. If Cooper Rush beats the Rams. On the, they're on the road, right? If, if, he, road. if he wins in if LA, if he wins in LA, again, I said last week I was screaming about how that. If my quarterback was five and zero in his career and just beat the defending Super Bowl champions on their turf, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want them to take him out. They, Regardless the of if he's going to beat the Rams, and they're not oh. going to take, they're not, they're going to take him out because beating uh, the Rams means nothing. If Cooper Rush goes undefeated, I think Dak Prescott takes the job back. Which, which look, oh, it, I think that, he will too, but it could be so, wrong. Something that I was worried about like when Zach got hurt is it's so difficult to play quarterback of the fan base isn't behind him. And I've seen it before with the Jets with Tebow and Sanchez, all this stuff. If Dak is down the, his, the week, he comes back they're down 13 zero. You don't think cowboy, uh, what is it? Jerry world, whatever the state a TV stadium, is it going to be going bring in? Like we want rush. Look, I that, that happen, it was, but I can attest to, because it was the same thing with Mitch. Every incompletion. Boo, boo. But it's so hard. The Cowboys fans love yeah. Dak Prescott. But do they? Are you sure? But if Cooper Rush goes thirteen and four, <laughs> and then you bring in Dak and he's playing bad. Well, when does Dak? Dak gets back in what? Two weeks? I'm telling you, they'll go twelve and five under Cooper. Dak comes back in the playoffs and he loses. No, because you look. This is what I was trying to get to before. Is Cooper Rush makes a lot of the good makes a lot of good reads and he throws the ball pretty well, pretty accurately. Uh, again, though, a word that we like to to say on this show is the ceiling. He does not have the ceiling of Dak Prescott. A healthy Dak Prescott. What, what was he last year? Touchdowns, well, what, 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 Zach, what has he done? He was, he was very good, Dak. What has he done? I mean, Dak was one of the best quarterbacks in football all of last season. Listen, something that this show is making evident to me, whether it be quarterback, whether it be trivia, whether it be power rankings, something that matters to me is W's. That's all no, I care about. No, it doesn't about. matter to you because I mean, you would have bet one point and no, won the No, trivia. no, no, no. Hold on. You has, care about feelings, not about has Oh, Dak, has you think I'm a on. feelings guy? Has, has Dak Prescott won a playoff game? I don't believe no, he's ever had. He's never had the opportunity. He hasn't had the chance. He has had the chance. Like if he has a good regular season, give him the chance. But Jack, you watch Cooper Rush what... right now, and he's been he's playing well, but he's benefiting a lot from the play calls are really good. The receivers are making plays around him. I don't think that he's doing anything that Dak Prescott. Won, that I'll, 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 I'll tell you what you he guys would have done. You, I know, guys, I know. Go ahead, Ziggy. What you guys would have done is said, "Oh man, Jalen Hurts, he's really struggling out there." You know who can play quarterback at a high level? Gardner Minshew. Andrew would have Gardner, Gardner Minshew on the no, Eagles no, roster. No, 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 no. would have kept him in there. Actually, I met Gardner Minshew. Well. I hate that guy. Back at a high level. I hate Gardner was, Minshew. Was, was wow, his... How do you mean it? Well, so I was in Nashville with some of my friends. Again, we're going off we the rails, need, but this is what we do. It was me, my buddies. Don't the... need to go into it. Yeah, you're about to Regardless, start. we're at Nashville. It's New Year's. Great time. We're at a bar. One of my buddies comes up to me of uh, Highlands fame and goes, dude, that's Gardner Minshew over there. Look over, got the cowboy boots, got he had the Fu Manchu, that's when it was big. 
Like, oh, it's Gardner Minshew. You know, we're drinking, we're at a bar. And again, this year when I was in Nashville, I actually saw George Kittle. I'm not like a celebrity guy. That's not me. If I see a famous athlete, I'm pro, like, you know, just be like, what's up, man? Walk by. You don't want it. They're out. They're having a fun night. Let him do his thing. Don't bother him. Let him do his thing. Yeah, sure. So my buddy's like, that's Gardner, Gardner Minshew. She's like, all right. So we're walking by, and like, my buddy's like, oh, what's up? And keeps walking, and his, his escalate of people get in his way and are like, yo, yo, leave him alone. That's not Gardner Minshew. And we're like, I mean, listen, man, we're not here to bother you. Like, that's Gardner Minshew, but like, we're not going to bother you. You have a great night, whatever. And the entourages like, of people don't step in saying it's not Gardner Minshew unless it's one hundred percent Gardner Minshew. Yeah, exactly. But they were getting mad at Gar- he was like, he's like, yeah, guys, get out of my face! Like I can't deal with this tonight. So you know what? Screw that guy. You're a backup quarterback in the NFL. You wore jean shorts and broke your arm on purpose or something. You suck. Yeah. So I'm not a Gardner Minshew guy. So don't say that. But was his mustache as cool in person as on the TV? No, it wasn't. No. no. Okay. That's the yeah. It's, it's like this is an anti like, Gardner Minshew podcast. It's, it's like it's like why do I care about Gardner Minshew? We should care about me. You know, come say hi to Jack Weinberg. I don't give a crap about you. you listen, don't give a crap listen. About me. I've I've I, drank seventeen beers tonight. Got denied by eleven women. I'm having an all time performance <laughs> over here. You come oh, say hello and bad to me. Say hello, no, no. Andrew. <laughs> say hello Ziggy. to Andrew King. <laughs> Ziggy, he's talking about in Nashville. He's talking about in Nashville, not tonight. Oh, not, not tonight. In Nashville. <laughs> Andrew's over at trivia. I thought he was saying tonight he was, Emma, what the? Um, How do you lose at trivia and strike out with 11 women in one night? The Maybe you'd be surprised. <laughs> so, so you would be surprised. To, re- to recap this Cowboys thing here is they're playing really good football. They, 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 look, they look like a, one of the top teams in the league at the moment. Uh, I just feel that when Dak Prescott gets back, you're talking about a team now that with that defense, the way that they're playing, they can compete with anyone, and, and the division the division and the conference is just so wide open. Well, the Eagles are good, but the conference is so wide open in the NFC. I think Dak Prescott, if he's able to just stay healthy and kind of get his feet under him, you're looking at a really, really good Cowboy team that can't quite reach the potential. Don't, with don't sleep on my 14th ranked team either. Who, who you got there, 14? Let me see. Hold on. At 14, of the Giants. Big Blue! <laughs> Uh, not, uh, so he's a New Jersey football guy, Andrew. I guess, he's a New I Jersey guess, football guy. I guess he is. Uh, three and one. Three and one. It's an easy schedule we mentioned. They can very easily be set. Listen, Paul, two. as an athlete, I know myself. Winning games is a difficult thing to do, especially in the National Football League. No, win, winning any game. Yeah, winning any games is hard. Uh, that was actually one of our sayings back in Notre Dame television or that we that we adopted. It was just winning is hard. And that's, why, that's what Notre Dame was doing for a while. But uh, the, the Giants, Daniel Jones is very, very clearly not the guy to me. They could look. All right, let me ask you something. If they go twelve and five this year, are you starting Daniel Jones again next season? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. If Zach Wilson brings the Jets to the playoffs, I'll start. He's got twenty years. So the Daniel Jones that you see right now, you're willing to keep him in that lineup moving forward. I don't think Daniel Jones is good, but I don't think he's going to go twelve and five. But if somehow he did, you got to get let him thing. keep playing. He's not going to go twelve and five. But if he does, obviously something's going right. Look, if they can beat the bad teams, that's very good. But you're not gonna you're not gonna contend for a Super yeah, Bowl. Look, in recent history, the Giants haven't beaten a bad team. It's oh like no, they beat the Titans like, on the road. Like that's they, huge. Like they've lost should've to the lost bad teams. Game. Well, Ziggy, 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 what do you think about this? What do you think about Daniel Jones' future in New York? New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, East Rutherford. I'm, I'm hoping that he's not frozen. I think he's like sleeping. Fuck. No, we heard him. We're, we're good. Computer, you're here. Wait, you can hear me? We yeah, can hear you. we hear you. Yes, we hear you. My, my computer has crashed. <laughs> I mean, we hear you perfectly, though. No, but no, we, everything has crashed except the audio. So I got to restart my computer. All right. Well, you'll join, join back into the Zoom call. And, and I think that we yeah, can. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will. Anyways, you, you guys, I, I don't, I, I guess I can say what I have to say about the Giants. Yeah, do that um, first. Go ahead. <laughs> Looking on this, side. this team is bad. You pull up, put us up next to us. I, I, I think that the fact that they're winning a couple games doesn't mean you get to just ignore every single thing about this team. And one thing worth knowing about this team is that they're bad. They've got like three good players. They're starting a rebuild, and we know Daniel Jones is terrible. Andrew, you know Daniel Jones is terrible. Don't lie to me. No, I, I don't think he's good. Like I said, I texted my friends who are Giants fans, and I said, "Now I see the Daniel Jones issue after watching the Monday Night Football game." He looks good. He'll make like these plays where he rolls out and looks like he's controlling the offense. Then you look at his stats. He'll be 17 for 33 for 130 yards and a pick. So, yeah, so it doesn't, I don't care how many games they win. You need good players. And Daniel Jones, not a good player. You know what benefits the Giants, though? I really do not believe there are many teams that are that good in the NFL this year. 
Oh, I don't I, I think I, this year there's five there teams. Yeah, I really don't. I think there's five or six That's teams. That's why I'm saying they could have a very good record, especially with the schedule that they have. And then you could be tricked into believing in Daniel no, but Jones goes, for another he, season. No, he goes 12 and 5 like he's a quarterback. But football is any given Sunday. It really is. They could go. Okay, so say they're the sixth seed in the NFC and they go play. Let, let, let me look at some helmets. The, your Vikings. They go play your Vikings who are, they'd be the five seed, right? So they play the five seed in the, oh, no, not the five seed. They play, they'd play the three. Regardless who they play. Say they play the Vikings. Some somehow. division winners. Some yeah, division. The, Packers. They, the, the Packers. Okay, they go play the Packers. You never know what could happen in the cold. The Giants, someone muffs a punt. The Giants get on it. They go run it in. Recording and that's, what, that's not what I'm – I'm saying that I can easily see a situation in which you go into the playoffs if you're the Giants, and, and right now they're on track to do so. Once you're there, anything can happen. I totally believe that. You, yeah, can, so have, what, you can have fluke, fluky seasons. I mean, look at the two Super Bowls they had. Look, look at they the, went yeah, on great the runs. Two, the two New Jersey or New York teams, the Giants were two wild cards. The Jets made two AFC championships with – you look at Sanchez, the guy is beat. I mean, he's not that type of quarterback. He went on the road and beat Tom Brady. That never happened. So, like I'm saying, if they get in the playoffs, you never know what could happen. And I think it would be tough to move on from someone who just brought you to the playoffs. What I'm saying, though, is that you have teams – and I'm going to go back for a second now. Think about Tim Tebow, right? Tim Tebow with the Broncos. Yeah. That team was, what, 11-5, and five, I think? I had a magnificent run through the season. But they were what happened? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no they, they were 8-8. Eight eight eight. Eight. They were 8-8, eight eight, but his run was great. And they beat the yeah. Steelers. Yeah. We sorry, were sorry. 12 and four. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. His run, though, at the end, at the end of the season, they got hot and they got into the playoffs. He was playing great football. They beat the Steelers going to New England, and they get, they get destroyed there. But also think about the Bears. I ran it back. Think about the Bears. Mitch Trubisky, they're 13-3. and three. I understand they ran it back, and I probably would have done so too that season. You make a field goal. You make a field goal, but then we look what happened with Mitch going forward. Some seasons you just kind of catch lightning in a bottle. There are different factors. It's, it could be coaching. Matt Nagy was great that year. It could be a, a schedule that's easy like the Giants right now. It could be miracle finishes uh-huh. like the Broncos, but sometimes you just know he's not the guy. You knew Mitch wasn't the guy watching, even though Bears fans were happy. You knew Tebow wasn't the guy as much as people wanted to buy in. I'm watching the Giants, and I think to myself, he can't make throws that an NFL starting quarterback needs to make. Well, there's so a they've difference. They've got to be ready to move on. Yes, yes but there's a difference of going to the play. Like if the Giants go, say they go twelve and five, right? They go to Lambeau, and Daniel Jones goes, and he's nine for twenty-seven with four picks. Then you know, all right, he got us here, maybe a little fluky, and he was the reason we lost. If he goes in there, and you know they keep it close, like Mitch did, like Tebow did, I don't think he can move on from him. You he's, think? You think too? Like where I disagree is. If he has a good season, right, and you know, you're 12 and 5, makes playoffs, whatever, I think you owe it to him. I think he deserves oh, yeah. to come into next, to, to next year. And if he can continue it, for did, Jimmy, reason, Gal- did for, Jimmy Garoppolo deserve to be the starter? You were on board with Trey Lance. I, no, I wasn't. You were all Jimmy G? I, I was Trey Lance, and I'm an idiot. No, I was Jimmy G. All I was right. Jimmy G through and through. All right. If this team's a playoff team and you come into next season, he deserves to be your quarterback. And if you can repeat it and take him back, he's the guy. But and you should he, plan for the it, future. And if he can't, it was a fluke. Well, listen, okay, but so he deserves to come I, back. I, look, I, I'm, f- I'm fine with giving him – with people wanting to give someone a chance after a good season. I'm just saying I've seen enough. I've seen enough to know. Oh, I, I don't – I also agree that he shouldn't be the quarterback anymore. But they won't be – But five. I'm saying – something I've learned through yeah. being yeah, in a locker hypothetical. room, yeah. like on the other end, even though it's high school, obviously, it's nothing compared. I don't even want to compare it to the NFL. But if someone earns something and you take that away from them, it's it's so difficult to keep that locker room as a head coach. Like Jack's saying, if if Daniel Jones goes 12-5 and five and, like, he's this team's quarterback, he's their leader, and then you, Brian Dable, come in after first year and be like, all right, you're done. I'm going to get someone else. You kind of lose the locker room where they're like, all right, so then what are the expectations here? The time to move on is, 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 is when he stinks. Like a Mitch thing. Like, like, like T- Tomlin didn't give it right to pick it. Mitch was playing horrible against the Jets, and he said, okay, now it's – everyone can see that this is we not working. Spark. Yeah. That was the right call. Yeah. Let's see. Is Andrew, are you back a, now? Is that a water bottle? Oh, yeah, I've been back. What no, is, he's been – What is that? Exactly. A water bottle? He's drinking a water bottle? <laughs> All right, look at that. Robert uh, goes back. All right. Uh, one more topic, Recording then we'll, then we'll in get into our game picks, if that's uh, good with you guys. And look, I want – I would like listeners to know that we, we're putting in work right now. We are really oh, yeah. putting in work. It is late. It is 11 It is yeah. late. Z- Ziggy, are you going to be able to make it for game picks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not missing that for the world. Z- Ziggy has to teach uh, 21-year-old Matt Matt Johnson in psychology class at 8 a.m., and he's here for us. Ziggy, what's the name of your class? I don't think we ever a- – Ancient and Medieval Philosophy. That's what we're doing. Ziggy. Wow. If I was in your class, 
Would you give me a good grade, regardless? No. <laughs> You see, I, th- I, I think t- I'd give you a bad grade regardless. <laughs> I took but a no, philosophy. No, I mean, I would grade you fairly. I just, I, I wouldn't expect. But he'd help much. you. I took a philosophy class um, at TCNJ. It was one of my because it was a liberal arts school. They first day they said get these ten books. I got none of them. Uh, I didn't read a page. Great student. I had no idea what was going on, and I finished with a C. So I wish I'd known you back then. Maybe you could have helped me out. Those books are the biggest waste of money of all time. They're this big. It was like I, I think I spent. I mean, over thousands each semester. No, no, I, I, read. I'd be like, I mom, I'd be like, mom, I need three grand to buy ten books for uh, philosophy. Yeah, She's cost. like, you're not yeah, going to. I mean, we're, 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 we're careful not to assign more books than we need, and they're usually like, I think the students for this class, I checked, they would have had to spend like forty bucks on books. See that that's, that's professor that's, if they wanted yeah, them legitimately. Before, I, I, um, I, I need Ziggy as my professor. Oh, let me tell you, Ziggy, he's taught me philosophy multiple times. Like he's helped me through papers. Seriously, one of the best teachers I've ever had. So he he absolutely. Well, Ziggy, I know this is again. We do. we don't have much left, so I I think there's time to ask this question. What is your uh, that train thing, the train philosophy question? The trolley problem. Yes. Yeah. I, so if you'd actually read uh, Natural Goodness, which I imagine they didn't have you read because you need to go up a I, foot, but I did. The I did. the reason she invents this trolley problem is just be to show what an absolute waste of time this is with respect to moral theory. Moral theory, like if you're doing proper moral theory, you're not thinking about questions like the trolley problem. And a lot of contemporary ethicists, they want to do that, but it's it's a huge mistake. Well, it's like it's like if you take the train's gonna run over like whatever, five people, but then if you pull the lever, it runs over something else. It's something like that, right? Someone, it was yeah. someone you love or something like that. Uh, no, 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 it's, no. Just, it's just one person. They're yeah, both, it's, it's it's like the train is going to run over ten people, regardless. But if you pull five. the lever or five. That was right originally. I don't know why I changed it. You pull the lever, then it runs over one person. But then, like, you know morally, I killed this one person. But it's already going to kill five. So, like, what do you do? Let it run over five. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm saying you didn't do it. You're dead. Sorry. I mean, look, I, to me, it depends who it is. Like, like, no, well, you don't know them. That's the thing. Oh, you don't know them. It's Ziggy. Ziggy right now. <laughs> Uh, this is like I don't you know, know. I'll, I'll actually say I don't think any of my undergraduates listen to this. If they do, I'm sorry, but I will say this is an above average level of discussion compared to what I get in a typical eight a.m. Oh, oh, Ziggy, I'd have class at no, eight o'clock. Yeah. I'd walk in, I'd open my computer, and I have watched the New York Jets go into New England in 2010 in the wild card <laughs> round and win once a week at eight a.m. during philosophy I mean, class. At least you'd be in class at eight a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I know that they're eight a.m. Listen, I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry to regret. I'd set my alarm for 9.20 for a 9.30. I, TCNJ is a small campus. I'd say I'd probably have to take 45 steps to get to my class. I'd wake up at 9.20 and go, oh, too far today. <laughs> Turn it off and go right back yeah, to sleep. Imagine my stupid alarm. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. I'd be like, not today. I'll get, I'll uh, do you want to hear a story? I have to tell it. I, we're, we're, we're vibing. We're rolling. Is, it, is Ziggy here or he left? Ziggy's here. All right. Ziggy's here. I don't want to hit this because Ziggy's got to get up early. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I'm in a uh, communications class. I'm a senior. It's a 100 level class because I changed my major, so I had to take this class. It's me and all freshmen. <laughs> it is maybe the easiest class I've ever taken. It's like uh, it's like communication of so- it's so easy. It's like a kind of like communications. A pl- it's not full. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, it's so easy. It's like per- it's like some sort of like perception class. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like oh, people perceive this because of this. Whatever. It was very easy. I have a 99 going into the last, the last week. Not, no, Paul, it was a three-hour class on Mondays at 5 o'clock. I remember very vividly. I was the only senior in the class. It's me and a bunch of 18-year-olds. I'd watched the beginning of Monday Night Football for the last half of the class and never picked my head up. So I'm like, oh, I have a 99. You know, it's good. I got my A+, plus, whatever. And I, I, I'm i sure you people can't tell, but I'm not an idiot, really. But uh, – Things I do, like what I'm about to say, make me an idiot. So I'm in a group chat with a couple of people in the class because, you know, you have group projects and I just the people sitting next to me like, oh, you'll be with me. You'll be with me. Sure. I get an email from the professor a week after the semester ends, after I think, you know, I locked in my 99. He goes, where were you last week? I go, the hell are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, where were you for the final exam? And I was like, what do you mean? Where was I for the final exam? We didn't have a final exam. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, we do. It was in the syllabus. So, I, so I'm, now I'm like, oh, my God. I, 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 miss, I don't know what to do. So I text these, these, girl, these young assume, like these girls. I've, I don't even know their names. 
they're just two numbers on my phone. Strikeout. Like, strikeout. No, no, this isn't a strikeout. <laughs> you, you attempted anything? Or? No, no, I'm saying I texted, right, go ahead, go ahead. I texted these girls who are my partners because the communication class, I was one of the only men. You know, I'm very gender happy every way, you know, whatever you want to be. So I text these girls and I go, did we have a final exam? They're like, yeah, why weren't you there? <laughs> and I go, how did you know about this final exam? They're like, we read the syllabus. Yeah. So I was like, this guy made no mention to the final exam in class. <laughs> They're like, no, but it was in the syllabus. So I go into this, this, this teacher, mind this you. This sounds like a communications experiment. <laughs> yeah. Mind you, this teacher is like, Ziggy, he's a 24-year-old guy. I'm 22. My beard, I'm like, a, I look older than the guy. So I walk in. I'm like, hey, Mr. O'Brien, like, I apologize to missed the final. You just kind of never brought it up. Like, how was I supposed to know? He's like, well, Andrew, as, you know, an advanced student, you should know to read the syllabus. So long story short, I ended with a 50 in the class. Oh, no. And I had to retake the class because he didn't let me retake oh, the class. Oh, no, Nobody actually reads the syllabus. I mean, is that not absurd? Uh, he, he ne- Jack, he, it was a final class. He said, all right, guys, like, great year. Have a, have a great winter break. I, mean, I don't read the syllabus. Right, well, let me ask. Ziggy. I don't read the syllabus. Ziggy, 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 nobody reads the syllabus. If a student does that to you, Ziggy, what do you say? Well, I mean, if it's a, if it's a week after the final exam, it would be literally too late for them to take. That. Like, I couldn't upload sure. it. But, Ziggy, right. what do you not in the last class mention that you have a final exam next week? I, I can't imagine not mentioning Thank you. So you know, you're, I'll just say you're not the only person who's missed a final exam, but I had a little bit of a different outcome. All right. Here's the uh, – <laughs> here, here's, how, here's how we're going to end this here. Five minutes on Brady. Then we're going to do our game picks. Jack Cap, wow. we're out of okay, here. So he, he gets to share his final exam story, and I don't get to Wait, would you I, like to – Oh, no, I want to hear it. Okay. Yeah. So he wants to tell me. He wants to stick around. I'll stay here all night. We gotta let him tell us. This, this is cool. a phenomenal story. This is my freshman year, and uh, you know, I, I was struggling a little bit. I hadn't really found my feet academically. You know, you're at this big, intimidating school. But in any case, I was in this like uh, intro to physics class. It was like the second one. I'd taken intro to physics before the semester. Got like a B. This one was a little bit harder, and I'm I'm like really struggling. I've got a D in the class. I like I need to I'd, I'd sit down and do the math and think, OK, I need an 87 percent on the final exam to not fail. Right. Because the final exam was worth a lot. I was like borderline F D is a fail. I'm like, OK, I need an 87 to get myself up to a C minus and be good. 87 you know, is ambitious. Right. But it's the kind of thing you could do if you work really hard. So I study. I hit the books hard for about a week getting ready for this final exam. And it's the morning of the final exam. It's on a Friday at Notre Dame, last week, last day of exams. The grading period's Monday, and I sleep through the exam, just straight up. <laughs> so, <laughs> really, you know, it was at 10 a.m. I'd been really tired. I stayed up too late studying, zonked mm-hmm. out, slept through the exam. And I just, I think to myself, like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you know, I think about emailing the guy, right? But it's like it's Friday afternoon at this point. There's no chance I can make it up. So I just decide, you know, I'm going to forget about this, screw it over the grade. I'm going to live with it. Monday, final grades are posted. I log in and check the grades. I got a C in the class. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I did the math. I would have needed like a 99 on the exam to get that. I'm pretty sure this guy, you know, he was old, a little scatterbrained. I think he thought he lost the exam <laughs> and gave me 100. I didn't gave say, you 100. You got 100 like a, on the final. This is like a 120-person class, right? So, you know, he'd have no way of knowing whether I showed up. A brilliant like maneuver. A student, That's just... a, student, a student says absolutely nothing to you after missing the final. Maybe you just assume, like, shoot, did I lose the exam? You're embarrassed. You're afraid of losing face. You just give him a good grade. And this so is like a philosophy class, right? If I had sat down yes. and taken that exam, I would have failed the class. <laughs> <laughs> because I slept through it, my grade improved dramatically. Hey, I remember hey, after that, Ziggy's like happens, so happy. Everything happens for a reason, Ziggy. I remember how happy Ziggy was. He's, he's like, guys, I like, I like you got a hundred on this or something. He's like, I don't remember. Ziggy, I think at one point you're like, I don't remember taking it. So like uh, either I'm tripping or, or something happened here. That's Wait, unbelievable. I, I thought like maybe, you know, it's Monday, right? And you start doubting yourself. Like, how could this happen? I vaguely Should, remember you I questioning if you took it. I and I just forgot. <laughs> because who would do this? Who would just give you a hundred on an exam you didn't take? We're rolling This right guy. Now. I mean, Ziggy, is, is there any sort of world where you took it and you just don't remember <laughs> could have you been like, so exhausted you, that you, you stumbled there you, and yeah, got a hundred could you've been exhausted hung over flawless drunk drunk and just taking it were you an 18 year old freshman at notre dame underage drinking getting a hundred on tests? i mean 
it's, it's, no, no. He, I, I'm telling you guys, he, he was bewildered. But uh, I, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I missed <laughs> this exam, and the guy gave me a hundred. I want to. Um, well, congratulations on, on your success. Okay, so, my, my, the, the moral of this story, Andrew, is be better. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's just don't tell him next time. I've got to just I, get good. Again, this isn't an Andrew uh, horrendous attempting to be a teacher, which hopefully very soon I will be. Um, so th- this isn't an Andrew getting zero on tests and making it okay, but that wasn't the only zero I got in college. Jeez. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, really quickly, because it, it is the story of today, which is Tuesday, The uh, there will be a podcast on Wednesday. We'll probably probably release game picks on Friday, so you, you can have that to look forward to. Um, Tom Brady, allegedly, there are rumors that he's officially going to – Divorced from his wife, Giselle Bunchen, I think. Bunchen? I don't Something know. like that. Something the correct like that. pronunciation. Um, it, it's probably Bunchen. Bunchen. Um, Bunchen. And if that's the case, I mean, first off, I feel very bad for Tom Brady. Maybe I everyone don't. here does. I won't be. We, we should be careful with I'll that. Get, I'll get into it. Why we should be I careful with that. But um, I feel bad for Tom Brady there. From the point where we're going to look at it, because we are a football podcast, is you can't think that this doesn't impact him on the field I think a he's little done. bit. I, right? I disagree. I think he's done. I think, I think it might help. I think he's done. You think so? Done. Oh, I so, think it'll help. Just from the aspect of if you're getting again, I'm very. I'm a 24 year old who is very single. We have other single men on this podcast. I mean, you wonder why we're in a I mean, we're in a we're in a basement drinking, talking I, football. I think three or four of us are single. Besides, <laughs> well, four or five. Yeah. Four or five. Is it you single? Speak for yourself, guys. Oh, <laughs> Ziggy! Whoa, Whoa. Yes. Oh, Ziggy! Do we not know? Regardless, still sixty percent though. That's quick math right there for your professor. Um, are single, so I may not know, but I just feel like if you're gonna get divorced with someone, it's kind of like a long thing coming. So this might be a weight lifted off his shoulder. Like, okay, it's finally out there. I'm finally moving on. You don't think he's like depressed? Like, all right, there goes I, my wife. Right. Listen, I'll tell you I, one I thing. If I was Tom Brady, I would have never got married. I think he's gonna kill him. I think he's going to kill him. He's going to go out you're, there. You guys, you guys misunderstood. Tom Brady's not getting divorced. He was <laughs> he was married to football. Yeah. <laughs> he's going back after I a guess long he, look, period he of did, infidelity. He did choose football over her. Well, she said, you I come mean, home and spend more time with me and the kids, or it's or over. You, and, he, what, and he said, I mean, honey, I have that, a seventh ring to go get. Wait, is, yeah. that, is that? No, he did. has seven. Oh, and the eighth <laughs> ring. Eighth, I have an eighth ring to go get. I'm just saying, Tom Brady imploded his family in marriage to have a QBR Almost twenty worse hey, than Ziggy. Geno Smith. Ziggy, we did a show on this back, oh, man, uh, months ago when we talked about Brady coming back to the Buccaneers and how we never really thought he was actually re- going to retire. That there was this whole plan in place for him to, you know, possibly go to the Dolphins, and then uh, once he wasn't able to exactly maneuver the way he wanted to, he came back to the Bucks, which he always planned on playing uh, another season. So what I'm wondering here is, and I'm curious your thoughts. Do you think that that Brady had talked this through beforehand. Like it wasn't a shock to Giselle that he was going to come back. Right. Because it, it seems it to must have been, it, I guess it had to have been, but it seemed at the time from everything we saw that he always planned on coming back. He just maybe planned on playing for a different team. So I, I'm really confused now. So what actually happened was, was this a spur of the moment? You know, I want to come back and play. I had planned on retiring or was this, uh, you know, that maneuver gone wrong. So I'm very confused on the entire situation, but I look at it as a, as a whole. And I say, He's got three kids, two with Giselle. Do you want me to tell you what happened? No, no, but he's got he's got kids I, now. As a romantic be man who's questions. watched The Bachelor for many years, I've stopped recently, but a hopeless romantic. This is what happened. Tom Brady's had his time in the limelight, according to Giselle. I'm, I'm speaking as Giselle. Go he started ahead. playing. You're for, very qualified to speak for Giselle right now. I mean, we're we're just as pretty as one another. So he's played for 20 years, right? 22 years, I think. He's won all these Super Bowls. He's already been pe- coined the greatest quarterback, the greatest, greatest player ever. And Giselle was a big-time model, right? She had to take time off for that for Tom. She had to, you know, bear the, his children, take care of his children. Because he said, and I'm, I, listen, I would have done the same thing Tom did. He said, listen, hon, if you're marrying me, you got to know. Have a family with me. Football comes first. Monday through Friday to be the – and he's one of these people like Kobe Bryant, like – like Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, these people are insane with football. Like they eat, sleep, and breathe football. 
So Peyton when Manning. she Kobe Bryant famously insanely committed to football. No, we know. No, we, no, we, we know. What you sports. Mean. We know yeah. You mean. So when when she's like, okay, you have to come home and like, where maybe some other players in the NFL. You're forty four years old. Yeah, where some other players in the NFL might be like, oh, it's time for my family, or you know, it's Wednesday, it's Tuesday night, and or it's Monday night, and Coach gave us an off day because we won Sunday, and Tom's at the Tampa Bay facility until one in the morning, like he used to be with Belichick in New England, studying plays, knowing how to be better than the other team. She's like. Okay, so then I'm not going to be here anymore if you don't change. And he probably said, this is who I am. Because there's, there's got to be some – there's some underlying thing we there's have got, no idea yeah, about. No, and, and I, feel, it, I feel like we're obviously not qualified and it's to not, yeah, like, I'm not going to, like, bring it up. I'm team I, Tom. I, like, I'm team Tom. That was a huge flip. Oh, I'm team Tom. You I'm, just dislike the guy. I dislike the guy. He's taken my happiness away for years and years and years. But in the situation of – I'm the greatest player to ever play this sport, and I'm going to play until I literally can't walk anymore. And if you're not on the train, get off the tracks. I mean, I, I mean this you, must have been a conversation you, for multiple years because it seems tell. strange to just get a divorce after, you know, one more year. You so it has to, way, it has to yeah, be yeah. With the way Brady's know. been playing, I don't know if it's his – like, look, he's getting older for sure. But the way he's been playing, he hasn't looked great. Uh, there's something like, – he, he's, he's thinking about everything He's going, going through on. the ringer. He, he's what through the ringer. Something he really, it, he, it feels different this year. He really it feels is. Different. He really is. Here's an angle I think y'all aren't considering. Is everybody, everyone in the media is out here assuming that it's Giselle breaking up with him, got getting this divorce because, you know, he chose football over her. But what if he came back for a few weeks and just realized he really didn't like her that much? <sighs> so he goes back to playing football and immediately, the second he's back with the box, they start going through huge marital troubles. They start filing for a divorce very soon after. I, I mean, think it's who, just who knows, as who possible knows. this is Tom Brady initiated. Who knows? I, I think I think there's got to be an impact. It's hard. It's hard to take your personal life out of. Well, Paul, imagine you imagine you were the Vikings quarterback. You're you're seventeen and up. You're the Vikings quarterback, right? Sixteen and one. And you you sure. you love being in that locker room with the boys, the camaraderie after the W's, the grinding. You love football. You're here in your free time. No. Just talking football, but you get to play. You get to lead a city. And you have a wife that, you know, you care about very dearly. You have a family. And she goes, listen, Paul, that thing you love to do more than anything, you can't do anymore. And you go, you know what? I'll, I'll try it out for you because, you know, I love this family and I want to make it work. So you retire for a little bit. Then in a month, you go, you know what? I'm not happy. And I can't be the man I have to be for this family unless I have what makes me go, being the Vikings quarterback. And you go back and she says, I'm gone. You can't do it. Look, what, what, what I'm going to say is that I think – if I'm 44 years old and I've been playing for 22 seasons, I can understand why why my wife might be like, "All right, can you finally hang it up now?" And, oh, I understand. Like, like, there's probably been a lot of one more years in that discussions oh, in yeah. that there's, household. There's, there's nothing. So that who he, knows? Who knows? Though? We really don't. We there's don't. nothing he feels he has left to prove. It's for the total love of the game. He loves the game. He can't give it up. Yeah, I mean, it's, he he's literally cheating on her with Roger Goodell. <laughs> I mean, what's I mean? But also, you're Tom Brady. Let, let, now let it rip, man. Call up Kim K. Oh, jeez. Call up everyone. Call up everyone. I mean, I get them in the get get fifteen of them in the suite next week. Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner. Oh yeah, all the call up the all, whole family. All call the, up all the relatives. Call, uh, see, I think I think I think he's gonna be torn apart. Mia Khalifa. I I, I think. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I, we'll I don't see know if I'd pull a Garoppolo. <laughs> All right, right. Let's, uh, I don't think I would then he may never see the kids again. <laughs> I don't think I would for, for, for our Wednesday podcast, which is now, now very long, this is going to do it. Uh, thank you for listening, and we hope you like, subscribe, comment. Please feel free to comment on any of the discussions we've had. What, what you think of the divorce, what you think about playing trivia. Uh, would you gamble or would you be conservative? By the way, um, in trivia, I got who – We think uh, about philosophy. Court. Leave any philosophy, philosophy. questions. Did he, uh, Ziggy, do you know who uh, Courtney Kardashian's wife is? Because uh, I did in during trivia. Car- Courtney no, Kardashian. Courtney Kardashian has a wife. Husband, husband. husband. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Husband, husband. I'm it's, thinking it's of getting late. It's getting late. It's getting late. Yeah, it's getting late. I'm tired. Yeah, the train question. So, so please – Couple in. A couple, yeah. yeah. Please comment. Um, and again, I don't see gender. So wife, husband are all the same to me. You, it's, it's Travis Barker. Right? There we go. I also got that question. Yeah. Genius over here. So well, please. Just, it's Blink-182. It's one of the <laughs> biggest memes out there. These two didn't know it. No, I had no idea. Hey, who's in the night? Me and Jekyll. All right, let's get out of this all right. episode. So guys. there we go. That's <laughs> the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. Um, I do the Big Daddy question. We'll see you next time.